Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland and so this video is about um, Ali G. So here I am in this hometown of Staines and I believe I'm right in saying that this uh, building behind me, the old town hall, was a crucial film location. So you wouldn't have thought that such a blockbusting film would be made in Staines, although um, it was panned by some of the critics. As Ali G himself said, this was the best ever film made in Staines. A high accolade indeed. Um, anyway, so some of my younger viewers or some of my viewers from overseas will be unaware who Ali G was. Ali G is a fictional character created and played by Sasha Baron Cohen. I remember in uh, the, the autumn of 1999, I started watching the, the um, 11 o'clock show starring Ian Lee and Daisy Donovan, and then Ali G had a five minute segment on it. So Ali G is this ethnically ambiguous um, uh, youngster from somewhere in the Thames Valley. Um, who likes to think that he's from the ghetto and a gangster and things like that. Um, because Sasha Baron Cohen, he's um, a Jewish London, he went to Haberdash Erasmus, fee-paying school in London, solidly middle class, maybe even upper middle class, went to Cambridge University where his, his cousin is a renowned uh, psychologist, and then he got into modelling because he's very tall, very slim, good-looking chap with Levantine look, slightly olive skin. Um, and I remember in 1998, and try not to laugh too hard, but I used to watch um, the, the, the Big Breakfast starring Denise Van Uten and Johnny Vaughan, and there was this Find Me in the Model thing, uh, and I went along to that to a casting, obviously rejected straight away. But I did notice um, this uh, lanky, slender, um, strikingly handsome chap behind me. And then years later, I saw him on television. I would swear that was that was Sasha Baron Cohen. But anyway, he was trying to get into television presenting. There's some local television channel in Windsor in the mid '90s. So just after he got he came down from Cambridge, he was presenting something there with um I can't remember who it was. This um lady who was partly Burmese ancestry, British um, person. It's not Miley in class. Someone who looks a bit like her. But anyway, um, and he. he, he he was then one time interviewing some, some youth program, some teenage boys who were um, on their skateboards in, near Portobello Road in London, just under the motorway. There's a skate park there. And he approached them and he put on this um, faux Caribbean accent and persona, <coughs> assuming they'd immediately see through it and realise he, he was um, engaging with a tomfoolery. But they didn't. And at that moment, he realised he'd struck comedy gold because he noticed this phenomenon in and around London of uh, uh, youths who were not black Caribbean in background um, speaking in uh, what they took to be like um, uh, black Caribbean patois and so-called acting black and so on, often South Asian youths, as in British Indian, British Pakistani, because there were stereotypes against them was they were um, mummies, boys, and too uh, hard-working, over-educated, um, um, ambitious, financially ambitious, but uh, but they they lacked a certain swagger. They didn't have street cred. Whereas there's there's racial stereotypes for and against each racial group, and there were a lot of negative stereotypes uh, against the black community. But some of the positive ones were that they are hard and uh, things like that. They are manly. And so, to trying to get some of this machismo, some South Asian youths and white boys as well were um, pretending to speak in this um, uh, black Caribbean accent, um, saying um, Wagwan, my brethren, and things like that, calling people blood and things like that. So, um, Ali G was really skewering that um, uh, sociological phenomenon. Um, anyway, so uh, Ali G, we, it, it slips out in the film, his name is actually Alistair Graham. Um, he thinks he's really tough, but it actually he's pathetic. He lives with his parents, or even it's his grandmother, and he has his girlfriend, me Julie, he calls her me bitch and stuff like that. And driving in a car, one side labeled me and the other one me Julie or Ali G, and talking about the LAPD and the police, thinking they're really um, audacious, but in fact he's um, pathetically uh, frightened, easily cautious, teaching um, this class on how to be really tough to um, youngsters, turns out to be little boy scouts and things like that. And he's, he's a philanderer, he's a coward, he's a dimwit things like that. Um, how he accidentally gets elected to Parliament because he's going on some hunger strike, I can't remember what the issue is, and has himself chained up opposite the town hall. Um, and it all goes wrong for him. 
when uh, then his he's from the west states massive and the east state massives are his deadly enemies and there's some set of swings in the in the playground and you don't cross that line that's the border between the two the two gangs but anyway and he has to be on neutral turf when he sees his deadly foe and then they because uh, he's chained up for a 24-hour hunger strike and they pull down his um uh, trousers and undergarments, thereby exposing his crown jewels. Um, and there's nothing you can do about it because his hands are chained up behind him and his friends have gone. And just then, this young woman who's, who lusts after comes by and she sees his um, member of Wirale shriveled up like a sorted snail and she touches him. <laughs> um, and so, obviously, that's very wounding for him. So then he tries to um, arouse himself by thinking of Beyonce lezzing off with the other hot one from Destiny's Child. And in the most inopportune possible moment, this school mom with a gaggle of little schoolgirls cross the road and they see his tumorous member and they all shriek in horror. And then this battle axe of a school teacher comes up to him with a furled umbrella and whacks him really hard where it hurts. Um, and the other things is then Charles Dance plays this um, Machiavellian MP and he happens to be here in the town hall. And then there's this blind man who's polishing the um, the, the railings, they don't have the railings there anymore, just here. And he's coming up to Ali G, who's there um, uh, on the uh, chain up to the railings. And the blind man, not realizing Ali G is there, starts polishing his railing, as in his penis. And Charles Dance is looking out the window, they're saying, Why is that blind man tossing off that guy who's chained to the railings? So, um, uh, Charles Dance has, has hatched um, a devilishly clever plot. He wants to bring down the Prime Minister, who's in his own party, but his rival, and by having some disastrous by-election results, say he will be our party's candidate, Ali G. Um, what a doofus, nobody will ever vote for him. And so Ali G goes up against some sort of live television debate against a candidate from the opposition party. And it's quickly made plain that Ali G knows precious little about politics, and he's been made a complete fool of. And then, as a sort of brain fart, he says, well, you, you, you sucked off a horse. And to his astonishment, his um, uh, opponent says, OK, my God, how do you know about that? OK, actually, I did. And him having cr committed this act of utter perversion, he loses all credibility, and Ali G wins the election by, by, um, by a landslide. I shan't uh, recount the whole uh, plot. I think my synopsis has been adequate thus far. But uh, he gets to be in the home office, gets to see some pornography so foul that it's confiscated, gets to try loads of drugs which have been um, interdicted by the customs service and things like that, uh, in the house, as in the House of Commons. And it was all here, it's all about stains. And he chose that th his character would come from stains because it's the most middle, middle, middle class town in the United Kingdom. Um, bland, not horrid, that would at least be a little bit interesting. Not rough as he would have us believe, but just uh, boringly bourgeois. So that is, this is, this is Staines, the capital of tedium. I think that's a little hard on Staines, actually. All right, that's enough from me. So please donate. I desperately need donations to get the channel going. GeorgeCallahan79 at gmail.com. There's also more letters. Callahan is C-A-L-L-A-G-H-A-N. Thank you so much. Toodaloo.